Hi, everyone. I can't see myself, so I'm hoping you can see me. Oh, yep. Yeah. Looks like you can. Does that look all right for us? Can't get it up. Oh. There you go. Got it? Is it yeah. all right? Let it load. Let it load. Let it load. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. All right. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm starting to like these Thursday nights where I get to cook and bake and fiddle around in the kitchen. On that note, baking and fiddling around in the kitchen, just let me grab. Oh, where's it gone? Here. Um, some of you, some of you may have seen on um, YouTube. Some of you may already be subscribed to that on the YouTube, <laughs> YouTube on Brain, on Facebook. Some of you may already really be subscribed to their Facebook page or their emails, whatever, that NQR, which is a discount grocer here in Victoria, not quite right, um, revamped their Baronia store um, last week. And so while it opened last Thursday or Friday, the official opening with the mayor there to cut the ribbon and NQR man with his muscles and stuff was actually yesterday. <laughs> So I popped along yesterday morning. I was there about 10 past nine. I flew in with my list and what I wanted and flew back out again. I was home super quick time. But what I did get was this. And it's um, M&M's Fruit and Nut Chocolate. Now, I only bought two bars because even though it was a dollar a bar, that's really good um price excellent price because it's a 155 gram block um i wasn't too sure what it would be like so i only got the two so if i have a chance tomorrow i'm going to whip back and get some more it was actually quite nice chocolate but just imagine it as an m m fruit and nut biscuit slice so last week when we did the crushed biscuits and the butter and the condensed milk you could add some coconut if you wanted to probably about a cup of coconut and melt the chocolate and add this chocolate to it. And that's another variation on that really simple, very basic biscuit-based slice. If you wanted to, you could put chocolate icing on it. You could um, melt plain chocolate and put it over the top for icing. But it's just another variation because sometimes I love that lemon coconut slice, just love it to bits. But it can get a bit, you know, same old, same old. So when you tart it up a bit, like we did with the caramello slice, or you do it with ginger nuts or chock ripples and add coconut and cherry chopped glacé cherries for a cherry ripe slice, it just adds a bit of variety without adding a whole lot more to the cost. So that's at NQR and it's only a dollar a block. Now they do have other Cadbury chocolates. Um, for two dollars a block, um, and they were the 180, 180 to 185 gram blocks that I saw, and there were varieties of those. So I just thought, while I was thinking, cooking and baking, Hannah's already into the chocolate. There goes her dessert. Um, I'd let you know that, apart from the fact the store's lovely. That was a really good price. And if you have an NQR next to you and you're inclined to like different things and coming up Easter, that's um, probably a nice a treat. Instead of here, there you go. Hannah will have a block instead of her Easter egg. Done. So there you go. So I thought tonight, being Moo Month, and if you're not sure what Moo Month is, Moo Month is Make Our Own Month, where we try all months to make as much of possible ourselves so it's not just in the kitchen it can be weed spray for the garden or it could be laundry detergent or it could be toilet bombs it could be all sorts of things whatever but we try to make it ourselves and that's not necessarily just to save money but because we can get a better quality product if we make it ourselves we get exactly what we want when we make it ourselves and as I go through the recipes tonight I'll read the recipes to you and then I'll tell you how I make them to suit our tastes. Because one of the really good things about learning to do things for yourself is that you can take a standard recipe or a standard set of instructions and you can just adjust them 
to suit your needs and your taste, your budget. And it's really nifty. It means that you're not going without things and it gives you variety. It gives you, what do we, what do we call them? It gives you opportunities. So you've got the opportunity to experience something that's really good for less. So first off is taco seasoning. Now, why would you buy taco seasoning? Hannah, my notebook's just over there, darling. Sorry. I did some research today and double-checked my figures. And if you buy taco seasoning, it runs at around $2. Thanks, sweetheart. $2 a packet for about a 35 gram packet. That works out to, are you sitting down, $66.70 a kilo for taco seasoning. If you use a packet a week, and we easily would use a packet a week in, because it's pretty basic, so I use it for tacos, enchiladas, burritos, Spanish rice to spice up a dip. I use it in refried beans. I use it for all sorts of things. It's really good if you um, shake some wedges into it and bake them. You've got Mexican wedges. That works out to $104 a year if you use a packet a week for 1.56 kilos of taco seasoning. Now, it takes around two minutes to make taco seasoning, whether you do um, a single lot or a bulk lot. I'll be doing the bulk lot tonight, but the recipe and instructions for both are on the Cheatscapes Club website, and I'll put the link in the show notes below after the show. But I can do enough for a year for around $20. And I say, <clears throat> excuse me, I say around $20 because depending on where I can get my herbs and spices, the prices vary. Now, for most of my herbs and spices, I go to Hindustan Imports in Dandenong South. Now, that's quite a trek from here. It's about a 25-minute drive. 25, 30 minutes, depending on traffic and whether I go on the freeway or down, it doesn't matter. But it's still a long way. So I generally only go once a year and I go with a big list. And that's where I get all my herbs and spices like cinnamon, the nutmeg, the mixed spice, the ginger, the coriander, coriander the cumin, the chilli powder, the dried onion flakes, garlic, garlic powder. Um, mm, coconut. Glace cherries in bulk, shredded coconut in bulk, um, uh, dried fruits and nuts, all sorts of things come from there. Basil, if I haven't got it growing in the Vanilla garden. Beans. Vanilla beans. Um, dried chilli, not the chilli powder, but the dried chilli. Um, celery seed, mustard seed, all those sorts of things all come from Hindustan imports because... I can get, if I only need a few, like we don't use a lot of mustard seed, so I don't need a whole lot. I only need a small packet. So 100 grams is more than enough for the year for me in mustard seed. So I can get that and I can get it and it's still less than half the price what you'd pay for it at the supermarket. I did um, an, a current affair segment of oh, five or six years ago now on the cost of the little jars and packets that you buy at the supermarket of your herbs and spices as opposed to buying them in bulk from somewhere like Hindustan or your local Indian or Asian grocer and it's mind-boggling because some of them were 10 times dearer worked out to be 10 times dearer for that pretty little jar they look like this we've got a couple of them here somewhere where are they that's the top must be up here. Cute little jars. We get them and refill them. We don't um, waste our money buying them. We buy big packets and refill those little jars for our pantry and save a fortune to boot. So Hindustan do mail order too. If you're not in Melbourne um, or Victoria, around Australia, they will post out to you. And even with the cost of postage, it is still a fraction of the price of buying your herbs and spices 
from the supermarket. So think about it. And next time you go to the supermarket and go to pick up a, where is it, a little thing of garlic salt, wonder, have a look at the um, unit price and see how much it costs. It's outrageous. Right, so in the taco seasoning, let me get my trusty bowl. It's really easy. We've got a cup of dried onion. Oops. And I suppose I should measure it, shouldn't I? Mm -hmm. Should measure it out for you. Cup of dried onion. No, I shouldn't because it's gone hard on me. It's all right. Let's just stir it up a bit. Um, these dried onion flakes from Hindustan are amazing. They are so nice. They actually smell like onion as opposed to some that you get that don't. Okay, there we go. That was a good scrape. Cup of dried onion into the bowl. Pop the lid back on. Now, the recipe says a third of a cup of chilli powder. Well, we have... I don't like spicy food. ...living with us. So I only add a quarter cup of the chilli powder because otherwise... It's too hot. It's too spicy. It burns my mouth. I don't like it. Do I do that really well? I've had practice. Um, how am I going to do this? You just pour that in. It's really... Yeah. I don't have much luck. There we go. Quarter cup of chilli powder. Now, there's a whole range of chilli, different types of chilli powders you can get. This is a mild one because, again, we have someone who doesn't like spicy food. And I flatly refuse to do 55 meals to suit 55 tastes. Then we have two tablespoons of cumin. Now I use the ground cumin powder and my trusty tablespoon. Do you measure it? There we go. One, two. Don't you love it? I love the smell of cumin. Doesn't it just smell Mexican? I love Mexican. <laughs> it smells so good. Um, paprika. Use whatever type of paprika you like. If you like it hot, you like it sweet, whatever. This is sweet and it's four tablespoons. Now, four tablespoons is actually about a quarter of a cup, I think. But anyway, one, two, three, four. Okay. Oregano. Again, we reuse the jars. And it's one tablespoon. Four teaspoons of garlic. Four teaspoons is uh, one tablespoon and a teaspoon. Okay. There we go. And mix and match. That's heaps. Okay, there we go. Onion powder. I don't use onion powder in it. The recipe says onion powder. I don't bother with it. The recipe also says, oh no, I've taken it off. I've taken it off mine. In the original recipe, there's also um, salt, a tablespoon of salt. I'm not a fan of salt. I don't like salt. So I don't add salt to any of my recipes unless it's a pickle or a chutney. Um, then you just get your trusty fork. They were garlic granules when you used weren't they? They were garlic granules, yeah, because I didn't have any garlic powder. Hi, Diana. Um, okay, so just mix it up. And that's it. Now, that's the bulk. Um, oh, it smells really nice. You can keep it. <laughs> It smells really good. Um, that's the bulk mix. I put it into old Vegemite jars. And I need to get the other one out, just like this, to go into my cupboard. Whoops. Glossy oh, boots. It'll shake up in the jar. There we go. room to give the shape before you use it. Now to use it, it's three teaspoons is the equivalent of one packet of taco seasoning. There you go. 
that's how easy it is to make. That's how quick it is to make. Um, if you do a lot of cooking, you've probably already got those herbs and spices in your pantry. You don't need to buy anything special. And again, as I did with the chilli powder, you can add more if you like it hotter. You can leave it out if you don't like it as hot. If you like the um, spiciness of the paprika, add more. Leave it out if you don't like Make it to your taste. I would suggest for anyone, and this is what, this is how I learned to cook because I grew up with a mum who was the most amazing cook and baker. She just was able to do anything and she could take a potato and turn it into a feast. And I didn't have that skill. So when disaster struck and we didn't have any money and I had to feed my family, I had to learn how to cook. Now, I did know how to do things. I wasn't totally useless in the kitchen, but I didn't actually know how to do stuff like this, make this sort of seasoning. I was tied to buying it from the supermarket. And, of course, when you only have $200 a month to spend on food, paying, I think, they were about $0.35 cents a packet back then, out of that $200 is a lot. So you need to, I needed to learn to do things. So what I would do was hunt around and find a recipe that I thought we'd like. And to find the recipes that we liked, I'd look at the list of ingredients and go, yep, we like tomatoes, we like onion, we like garlic, we like carrots, we like, yep, beautiful, I can try this sauce. And I'd make it to the recipe once. If we liked it, then I'd stick to the recipe. If I thought we could do it, it needed tweaking, then I'd tweak it to suit our taste the next time we made it and I'd just scribble next to it what I'd done. I might have, whoops, we've got a little bug. Um, I might have added more garlic or taken out some of the onion or whatever, used more tomato or used half diced tomatoes and some tomato paste, whatever. I did that. So when you're learning and when you're trying to do these things, do it to the recipe the first time and then Think about how you can tweak it to make it your own so that it suits you because, you know, I said it last week and I say it all the time, we live and work in kitchens. We don't live in MasterChef. We don't live in my kitchen rules. We don't have people buying the ingredients for us. We need to do it. So we need to get the best value for our money and that means getting ingredients that do more than one thing and that suit more than one meal. So experiment. Don't be afraid to experiment with your recipes it's worthwhile and who knows you could create something amazing so that's the taco seasoning easy as noella wants to know if you've gone over the ingredients again she missed a couple i certainly could run through the ingredients again now this is the bulk um recipe so it makes about two cups thereabouts um Okay, so one cup of dried onion, a third of a cup of chilli powder, two tablespoons of cumin. The recipe says four teaspoons of paprika. We like the paprika. I actually put in four tablespoons of paprika. The recipe says four teaspoons. Um, one tablespoon of oregano, four teaspoons of garlic powder, and two teaspoons of onion powder, which I leave out because I don't have it. And you already add onion. And, yeah, we already add onion. Now, this doesn't have the thickener added to it that the commercial products have. So when you've browned your meat, I brown the meat, drain it, then I add my three teaspoons of taco seasoning and stir it through. And I add the, um, I always usually add tin tomatoes to my taco mix and baked beans. And that seems to be enough moisture in it to bring it all together. And I don't need to add the water that you add with a commercial mix, with a packet mix. So I haven't written that on the notes, but I will put the link to this recipe in the show notes down underneath. Now, it's called taco. You're welcome, Noella. It's called taco seasoning, but I use this for, as I said, the burritos, the enchiladas, the um, Spanish rice, um, 
It makes a really good dip in sour cream or whipped cottage cheese. If you don't have a good substitute for sour cream in dips is cottage cheese, but you need to beat it so that it's smooth because you don't want the little curds um, happening. But it's, it's really versatile and it's really cheap. It's one of those things that we can all use if you like Mexican food, go for it and try it. Don't be afraid to. Okay. Now, the other thing we like that isn't quite my recipe, but it was, I don't even know where I got it from originally, so I can't tell you, but it wasn't, the original recipe wasn't mine, is the KFC mix. Over time, I adjusted it to suit our tastes because it was a little bit peppery and didn't quite work for my family. So the recipe that I'll post the link to is my version of it and it's really simple. Okay, I need a, oh, excuse me while I get a bowl. Okay, I wasn't thinking, thinking, thinking. I'm planning ahead. I didn't plan far enough ahead. Okay, so this is a chicken coating, but you don't have to use it just on chicken. It can go on steak, make crumb steak. It can go on um, sausages to do crumb sausages. So it's really simple. It um, tastes very similar to the KFC. As I said, I cut down the pepper because it was a bit peppery. Um, otherwise, pretty much um, the same. Hannah has a really good way of using this too, and she does um, schnitzels in it. And they're beautiful. So first you need two cups of plain flour. And again, I'll just measure them out so that you can see how it goes. Two cups of plain flour. Oh, you know. Does anyone else do that? Keep an old mug in their flour bin for scooping stuff out. Two cups of plain flour. Done. Pop the lid back on. The recipe says a teaspoon of salt. Again, I don't put the salt in it because I don't like salt. Um, a teaspoon of basil. There's my teaspoon. Teaspoon of basil. Teaspoon of oregano. The recipe says two teaspoons of thyme. No, sorry, one teaspoon of thyme. I'm out of thyme, so I won't be adding it. Smarty. Um, I won't be adding it tonight. I'll add it when I get some next time I go to the shop. And it also says two tablespoons of celery salt. And, again, I'm out of celery salt. And I wasn't out today, so I didn't think to get them. I apologise. But it seems like a bit of a waste to just run to run down the street to get two things. Waste of fuel, sorry. That was me being – I was being stingy. But petrol's quite expensive. It has come down, but it's still quite expensive. Okay, so I'll add those later. Now, two tablespoons of ground black pepper. So here we go. And I've cut that down. So I think the original recipe was three and it was too peppery for us. We didn't like it. Um, oh, smell the pepper. It smells good. Okay. Two tablespoons of dry mustard. This is the dry mustard I use, good old Coleman's. Uh, two tablespoons. Pop it in, one, two. Two teaspoons of ground ginger. Where did I put the ginger? We like ginger in our house, so it's never a two teaspoons is 10 mils. There we go. Okay. Um, a 
tablespoon of garlic salt, which I just had it's here. in a cupboard. That's granules? Um, that'll do. I don't, use, don't use it. It says garlic salt. I use granules because I don't like salt. Okay. Um, six tablespoons of chicken stock powder, which I do have here. This is the one I use. And so it is one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, this is often on half price sale um, for around $1.80. It comes on half price sale two or three times a year. And when it does, I usually grab a couple of tins. I use it, I use stock powder for this recipe and when I'm cooking rice I usually put um, I do a cup of rice two cups of water and a teaspoon of stock powder and a tablespoon of oil and I cook it in the microwave and then we come to paprika here we go again paprika and it's eight tablespoons Okay, so you have to count them for me. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I didn't measure any of those terribly carefully or accurately. And for this recipe, that doesn't matter so much. If I was baking a cake, it would be a different story and my measurements would have to be accurate. But this is a bit of a hit and miss type of thing, so I don't worry so much. Now, the paprika not only flavours it, but it gives it that colour. You know how the KFC chicken has that reddy brown colour to it? This is what gives it the colour. Just whisk it on. And that's it. That's pretty much it. Now, you can add, if you like to, um, parsley, if you want to, and that's quite nice too. Now, remember, I haven't added the celery salt or the thyme, so I will get some next time I am down the street, and it will probably be at, from Pellegrino's because they sell the cheapest spices around, apart from Hindustan. Um, can you use chicken stock tips instead of powder? You can, but you would have to crumble a few. So one stock cube, you probably need to use um, yeah, maybe, no, probably six or eight to get the equivalent flavour of the stock cubes because I think one stock cube is the equivalent of a tablespoon of powder. Don't quote me on it. You'd have to check on the back. It will tell you on the back of your packet. But that's your KFC mix and that's it done. It just goes into a Tupperware container, which I'm not allowed to get because it's on the top shelf and I'm not allowed to climb on anything anymore. So I have to wait till someone tall comes home to get it. Yeah. Otherwise, I get yelled at. So, yes. Is there a store like any QR in New South Wales or Sydney? Not that I know of. If anyone does know of a chain discount grocery like NQR anywhere else, um, that would be really good if you could let us know, but not that I know of. It's Do they still have Barlow? Or is that the last one closed? I think, I'm not sure whether Barlow still exists or not. But NQR is, um, it's definitely a discount grocer. It definitely sells things that are either close to or just on their best before use by dates. Um, it sells end of runs. We noticed something I got yesterday. Oh, they had the mini M&Ms for a dollar a packet. So I got five packets because we use those in baking. And um, they were in the old packaging, which is why they were cheap. So things like that. Or they will get things like flavours of biscuits or... Um, drinks and things that somebody thought was going to be amazingly popular and it ended up not being. Like with the tea, because it had decaf. Yes, small, yes, like with the Tetley tea. 
they had Tetley tea that was a dollar. I think it came down to 49 cents for a box, box of 100 million. Yeah, that's right. The Tetley tea and in the tea bags. And they started off at $2, went down to a dollar, then they did drop down to 49 cents. And all because in very small print on the box it had decaf. Um, it was still really good tea. Oh, great tea. It was, yeah, it was excellent tea and for 49 cents. Who cares? So that's your shake and bake. Now to use it, uh, sorry, a KFC mix. Now to use it, what Miss Hannah does is she gets her schnitzels and she dips them in the shake and bake. Then she dips them in the egg wash. Then she puts them in breadcrumbs. But the KFC mix is in the breadcrumbs. But she seasons her breadcrumbs with KFC mix too. Did you get that? So you've got your chicken schnitzels. They go into the KFC mix, into the egg wash, then into the seasoned breadcrumbs. And the breadcrumbs are seasoned with the KFC mix. And then they chill in the fridge for about half an hour to an hour so the crumb sets. If you do that, it doesn't fall off when they're frying. Then we brown them very quickly in hot oil, drain them, put them in the oven and let them bake in the oven until the chicken's cooked through. And that way the crumbs don't burn and the coating stays nice and crisp on the outside and it's not greasy like regular fried chicken is. It can be quite greasy. Now, egg wash for this doesn't have to be an egg. It could be milk. It could be cream, it could be milk and cream, it could be yogurt and milk, it could be any sort of um, savoury liquid that will stick, that the stuff will stick to. So you don't have to, if you don't have an egg, you don't have to worry about it. You can still use milk, you can use, um, yeah, like I said, watered down cream or whatever. But that's it. Now, I did some sums on this too because if you buy KFC, it's hideously expensive. It's over a dollar a piece of chicken. So we can get a kilo of chicken drumsticks for $3 and we can coat them with the KFC mix, which costs, this costs approximately $2.40 to make that much. It's a lot. And it lasts for ages, ages and ages and ages. Coats a lot of chicken, trust me. So for around $3.50, we can do eight to ten pieces of chicken. So that's another big saving. And it doesn't take that long. I know. You have to drive to KFC and you have to line up and you have to wait for it and you've got to bring it home and then you've got greasy bits and ugly boxes and stuff everywhere. Whereas you can do this really quickly. You could crumb the chicken tonight, pop it in the fridge and cook it tomorrow night when you get home. That's um, an easy way to do it. And it's not going to, it doesn't mean you spend hours in the kitchen then. When you do the mixes in bulk, like we do here, it, um, that's not properly mixed, sorry, um, it saves time in the long run. It doesn't take any longer to do a big mix like this than it does to do enough for just one or two pieces of chicken. So there you go. Now I will pop that aside because that can go in the jar when someone gets it down for me. Someone's buzzing. I like doing mixes. Hi, Jessica. We've well, got us live tonight, so that's nice. Welcome. Um, as you say, I like doing mixes in bulk and putting them in the, in the pantry, excuse me, ready to go, because it gives us, like I said before, it gives us options. It gives us choices. We're not stuck staring at a lump of meat and going, what can I do with it? Because you open the pantry and you go, well, I can do this. I can make tacos. I can make shepherd's pie. I can do whatever I like. You've got the variety there in all the mixes that you can make. So 
they don't just save you money. They save you a lot of frustration too and they save a lot of boring dinners. The other recipe I want to show you tonight is shake and bake. Now this I got out of an American magazine that I politely borrowed from somewhere. I think it might have been a doctor, a doctor's <clears throat> surgery. Um, and if I'm at the doctor's and they've got a magazine and I see something, you know, I always ask if I can take it. They always say yes. Or if I can just carefully cut the recipe or whatever I want out. They always say yes. In fact, while we are in Tasmania, we were staying at um, one of the caravan parks we stayed at, had a lovely um, assortment of craft magazines in the camp kitchen and I said to the lady, do you mind if I, you know, can I buy that magazine? She said, no, no, just take it. Thank you. So I did. I came home with a really nice craft magazine. So totally off topic, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Eve would like to know how long do the mixers last? Keep them, um, Eve, in an airtight jar or a Tupperware container. They'll keep for months, months and months and months in your pantry. This next one I'm showing you, the shake and bake mix, I actually keep in the fridge, but that's because it has oil in it. And I'll explain more about that when I get to it. But most of the mixes will keep for months in an airtight container in your pantry or a good jar. I use um, um, Makona jars or I've got a whole heap of these jars with the, they're like lock and lock rings in them. Whoops. Good old Tupperware that I picked up from garage sales and op shops and all over the place. So even the pasta jars. Now my onion's gone hard again. Um, if I put some rice in there, in a little piece of cheesecloth. That will stop it from doing that too, by the way. Okay, shake and bake. As I said, I filched this from an American magazine and it used, I had to adapt it because it had things in it that we just don't have here. Like we don't have graham crackers here. So I use wheat bix. So this is roughly 20 wheat bix. And I whiz them in the food processor so that they're a nice fine crumb. They're quite a good crumb. And that makes your shake and bake really crispy. Now, I don't always just use the crushed wheat bix because when we finish cereal, I have a Tupperware container. And when we finish cereal, I'll just get it and show you. I'll pop in the pantry. Excuse me. I'm just grabbing the container. Wait a second. I have this Tupperware container. Oh, and I told Wendy I didn't have one of those lids. Um, and when we empty the cereal packets or the cracker packets or whatever, you know, there's always a few crumbs in the bottom. I tip them into that container and keep it in the pantry. <coughs> Excuse me. And when it's full, then I know I can make another batch of shake and bake. Um, it's enough. I'm just going to grab a drink, sorry. So it could be um, bran flakes, could be all bran, it could be wheat mix crumbs, it could be sayo crumbs, it could be um, rice bubbles, whatever, Just any sort of savoury crumbs or go into there and then they all get whizzed up to use in the shake and bake. Okay, shake and bake. I'm not going to have enough plain flour. Maybe I am. Grab me some off the shelf. I can find it. Thank you. Okay. So there's four cups, and there's definitely not four cups in there. I didn't find that very well either, did I? Okay, so there's one and a half cups in there. I might have to get some out of the stockpile, darling. Uh, I think it's in the bottom box in the laundry. Yeah, I'm yeah. Doing that. All right, I'll get it later. Okay, four cups of plain flour. I had a crazy day today. I'm sorry for not being so very prepared, but I did have a crazy day today. I was sitting on the lounge this afternoon about half past three, and Tom came in, 
And he walked past and he looked and he came back and he looked at me and he said, Mum, why is the front tap on? What? Front tap? Said, what do you mean the front? He said, the front tap's on. So I trot out the front. The front tap was on. Someone, I, I don't know, someone turned the front tap on. So the hose was running. It hadn't been running very long, thank goodness, because the water um, wasn't running down the driveway or anything. It would have made a nice flood and certainly boosted the water bill if we hadn't found it. Oh, my goodness, who would do that? Why would anyone do that? Just bizarre. Okay, again, this has four, the recipe says four tablespoons of salt. I don't put the salt in. If you don't mind salt, by all means use it, but I really don't like salt, so we don't have it. And it also says two tablespoons of sugar, and I don't put the sugar in. It doesn't need sugar. Um, two teaspoons of garlic. Come on, garlic. <laughs> there we are. There we go. Also, two teaspoons of garlic. Um, two teaspoons of onion. These are um, these little measuring spoons are from um, Simply Too Good, and it's sim. They're really great because they slide up and down to get accurate measures. Uh, two spoons. Good old paprika. Three tablespoons. Could you grab me the oil out of the bottom of the cupboard, please, Owen? Two, three. And again, I wasn't measuring terribly accurately, but it's not a recipe that requires accuracy. Now, mix it all up. And I may use a spoon for this. Just to stir it all through before I add the oil. And you add the oil because then all you do is dip your whatever into the egg wash or the milk wash or the cream wash or whatever you're using and then straight into the shake and bake and straight into the oven and because it's already got the oil in it it will brown up beautifully and crisp up nicely okay now that's just a quarter cup of vegetable oil now i'm just using this sunflower oil from um aldi but you can use any vegetable oil whatever you've got whatever you like to use just a quarter cup and then it goes and then we stir it doesn't um, it sort of becomes a dry mix after a while the oil absorbs into everything and it becomes a dry mix the clumps will disappear and it's done and this is what I use for um, rissoles um, cream cheese patties, if I don't um, want to do breadcrumbs, I will use shake and bake. Crumb sausages are great done with shake and bake. Chicken, of course, steak. You can buy, um, uh, what's it called, uh, minute steak or barbecue steak, thinly sliced barbecue steak. Get the butcher to slice it in half again for you so it's really thin and crumb up for crumb steak and there you go now this one stays in the fridge because of the oil in it we don't want it to go rancid so it's not a pantry item it's a fridge item and that's why I use this jar because it's a nice big square one that fits neatly at the back of the shelf. It sits at the back of the second shelf of the fridge, so I can just reach in and get it when I need it. I'm um, crumbing something. Now, I will put it in the jar because I will put it in the fridge overnight until I get the flour out of the stockpile in the morning. Okay. Those. 
my shawl. Told everybody how I love this tunnel. Break my hand if I'm doing it backwards. Sorry, folks, I just can't do it backwards. Can you keep it as a dry mix and add the oil in later when you do use it? Um, you could, but you would need to calculate how much oil to add. So if you were only using um, a half a cup of mix or something, you probably only need a teaspoon of oil. You wouldn't want to use the full quarter cup. It keeps for months in the fridge, months and months and months. I'm making a big mess here. I'm really filling it up. But it's a really tasty recipe and it's a really good way of using up the crumbs from the cereal packets and the biscuit packets too because <laughs> we all are very conscious of waste at the moment. Now, I didn't leave room for the extra flour, did I? But we'll sort that out tomorrow. Um, so we're all really conscious of waste and not um, throwing our money in the bin. So we need to understand. There you go. I just go to that, and that just will sit in my fridge. By the time I've added the extra two cups of flour, the jar will be full, and that will be done. There we go. Add three simple mixes that are really easy to do. Taco seasoning will save you an absolute fortune each year. KFC mix will also save you money if you like crumbed chicken, cold crumbed chicken for picnics or in lunches. If you can find um, chicken on sale, buy it, stock up and know that you've got a recipe to use it. Um, and on that note, news has been a bit doom and gloom about chicken lately, hasn't it? So all this week, chicken's going up, chicken's going up, chicken's going up. Oh, do I need to run and um, quickly stock up again or restock the chicken? Well, we've still got quite a bit from last time it was on sale, so I don't really need to. But I'll keep an eye on it. And if I think prices are about to go bedonk, I will be um, stocking up because we do like our chicken. And, of course, shake and bake. So they were all simple. Now, I've made all of those, even with all my blathering on, in just over three quarters of an hour. If you were doing them yourself in your own kitchen without me blah, 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 it would probably take you five, six minutes to whip them all up and they'd be done and in the cupboard. You can't get much better or much cheaper than that and you can't get much healthier because you know what's in them. There's no artificial spices, uh, flavours, there's no thickeners, there's no um, colours in them. You saw what goes into them, so they're all reasonably safe and they're all recipes you can adjust to your own taste. It's what you like. Okay, now, oh, I had something to show you. Just need to show you. I have to say, who knows what this is? Anyone got one of these? No, no, no. Shake and bake. Priya, I use for coating rissoles, sausages, steak, anything like that. Um, it's actually a Danish bread, um, bread hook, Eve, for mixing bread batter. Bread dough. Um, the lovely Carol gave it to me because she knows I like to do, um, I do the tortillas and things by hand. I like to make them. And so this will save my old arthritic fingers on the whisk. And it's wonderful. It's just the best thing. I love it. Love it, love it to death. It's brilliant. It was a really nice present. It was one of the nicest gifts I've ever had, I think. I love it to death. Okay. So, any more questions? No, no more questions? Everybody's happy? Everybody's happy? We're all smiling? Has everybody liked us? 
tonight, give us a thumbs up so that we can, that helps boost our, boost our ratings with YouTube, makes us easier to find if you have to search for us or if someone is searching for us, it makes us easier to find if we have lots of those. Uh, so please do. It would make me very happy too to know that everyone's there. What else? Um, can't think of anything else. No, she's her mind's blown blank too. So is mine. It's um, a long weekend here this weekend. So I'm looking forward to it enormously. I cannot wait. And I'll be back on Tuesday night then. Tuesday night with something else to talk about until mm -hmm. you get sick of listening to me blather on by myself. You'll have to talk more. Mm. No, she's not going to talk more. See, I feel like I'm talking to myself because she's over there and you can't see her. But she is here. All right. Well, if it's not a long weekend where you live, I'm sorry you have to go to work on Monday. <laughs> but I'll hopefully be sleeping in or trying to anyway. So, all right. If there's no more questions, I will let you go. I will post the links to the recipes for these in the show notes. I will also post the link to the Moo Mixes book so that if you don't have it, you can um, pick it up and go through it. And I will see you on Tuesday at 7.30. All right. Bye, everyone. Have a lovely evening and a great weekend.